Hey, how you doing? It's Michael Montgomery, broker with Renzo Real Estate here in Calgary, Alberta. And today we are jumping into our August 2018 real estate market update. So we've been hearing some similar things month over month, even over the years, that sales are decreasing and listings are increasing. There's no change to that. There's no change to that this month. But I think it's important for us to really look at what these numbers mean and in which areas of Calgary that it's potentially more prominent. So if you're in one neck of the woods, or even if you're a buyer, you might have a certain viewpoint that sales and prices are way, way, way down. And if you're a seller, you might think, oh, but my community, they're hanging on. This is just the nature of real estate. If we're buying, we want to get the lowest price. If we're selling, we want to get the highest price. But let's truly look at the numbers and what is actually being said by the numbers and by the statistics. The first number that I really think is important is that prices are down 0.8% month over month. So we're August 2018, prices dropped by almost 1%. Doesn't seem like too much, but think about it. If your property was on the market in July or even into before the summer, your property would have been worth a certain amount. Let's say it was $500,000. Then if you were to list it the next month, boom, five grand gone. So that's basically what it's saying. It's not 100% true because it's dependent on the different product type in the different area of Calgary. But an over, overall, looking at that statistic does paint a little bit of a picture. We're also seeing that sales are down about 2.4%. So where this trend downward continues, it continues. And now we're starting to really realize it in some of the price decreases. Krebs of the Calgary Real Estate Board has put out in their statistics that a lot of this might have to do with lower employment rates or higher unemployment rates, I guess. Calgary still does have some high unemployment rates, so that can be causing it. But then also they're saying that the new home market competition, and we feel this, we feel this in the real estate industry. The, re the new homes that are out there are also competing for the homes as you are a seller, you're selling your home, but then you're also competing with potentially a new home builder. So all of this wrapped in does start to impact our overall statistics. So those two things, and the other thing which we discussed in our previous month's video was just these mortgage rules that were announced. You know, it's over six months ago now, but oftentimes there is that lag period. There's that lag period of oftentimes six months. So we are really starting to see a slowdown over the course of this summer. We're hopeful, of course, that we'll see a little bit of an uptick into fall. We do see a little uptick in sales as we move into fall, but let's look again at what the numbers are saying and what we have to do, depending if we are a buyer or if we are a seller. So we're gonna talk again about months of inventory. This has been talked about in previous videos and it's an extremely important number to understand because it does show overarching trends and what's happening. If you just look at say like an average price and there was a huge sale, a five, six, seven, $10 million sale in your community over the course of the last month, your average price is going to be skewed dramatically, dramatically. And the benchmark rate will adjust for certain items such as that, but still just looking at price alone doesn't tell the whole story. And it also doesn't tell too much about trends. If you look at it over time, yes, you can see a trend, but then as we start to move forward, and of course we can't predict the future, but we can look at certain statistics that will tell us a little bit of a story as we move forward. And that one, one of the most powerful ones anyways, that we see is the months of inventory. Months of inventory being, here's a certain number of properties that have been listed, or here's a certain number of properties that are on the market, and then here's the properties that are leaving the market. So these are the ones that are selling. So the ones that are selling, if you take that going month over month over month, how long is it going to take to eat up this inventory? So that's basically saying how many sales are occurring versus amount of inventory or new sales coming onto the market. And then we put this into months of inventory because each month there's a certain number of sales. So you can go back and watch previous videos on explaining exactly what this means and then how it relates to absorption rate, but it's very, very powerful. So as your months go up, clearly your sales are either going down or your inventory is going up. So that's going to cause something and it's going to cause something over the next month and potentially the next month and the next month. And that's why we look at it is because what happened last month is important and we do need to look at it, but we also need to know how many months of inventory we have so that when we're moving forward, how do we react? So let's look at certain parts. 
What we are seeing is if you're looking at the detached market in Calgary, let's just look at the detached market, you're about 4.7 months of inventory. This is starting to creep into kind of a balanced market, but you're starting to move more into sellers. If you've heard some of these videos before, or if you've been following the statistics, you know that potentially detached isn't necessarily as impacted as say apartment, the apartment sector. So this can be seen here. So if you're at 4.7 months of inventory for detached in Calgary, for apartment, you're at 6.8 or almost 6.9. So that's almost two months more. So that's just showing either the decrease in sales or the increase in inventory or a combination of both. So we have detached sales around, around or months of inventory around that 4.7 mark. So let's keep that in mind. And then for apartment, we have the 6.8 or 6.9. So now we're starting to really creep into high buyer's market territory. There's no real strong cutoff point, but most people will say between about four and five is where you start to reach in from, from a seller's territory into more balanced and then above, you know, four and a half, five, you're starting to get into more of a buyer's territory. But now let's look at some other interesting stats. So that was apartment and detached. Now let's look at row and semi-detached. So these sometimes kind of get grouped in because we think of the apartment sector, we think of the detached sector. And sometimes we're not as focused on what's happening in the semi-detached, so potentially say the infill market or the duplex market within Calgary. And the row, row properties are condos, but they're not apartment style condos. So let's look at those. If you're semi-detached, you're 6.4, almost 6.5 months of inventory. That's a very important number to know. So if you are semi-detached, if you're an infill in Calgary, you are very likely more in line with what's happening in the market with condos than you are the detached market. Interesting, right? If you have a nice infill, you do have to be competitive on price because as far as inventory and level of sales go, you're competing at the same level that potentially an apartment seller is. Important to know. On the row side, you're at 6.22 months of inventory. So again, you're still on the higher end, you're in that six to seven range but a little bit lower, but you're still in that range. So you have to keep that same mindset of staying as aggressive as you possibly can on price points. When you have an apartment, when you have a row or a townhouse, or when you have a semi-detached property, so an infill, a duplex, anything like that. So let's look at specifically which communities are doing okay in the long run. So these are communities that maybe we actually are in a more balanced market and potentially even somewhat into a seller's market, but I wouldn't think of it that much because even when your months of inventory are down, we're still overarching in Calgary in buyer's territory. So if you're in the Northwest and you have a detached home, Southeast and you have a detached home, or the East and you have a detached home, you're about three to four months of inventory. So that's lower. That's really bringing that detached number down, right? So that means that you are in more of a balanced territory. So Northwest detached, Southeast detached and East detached. Also semi-detached in Southeast, you're in the three to four range. So those are pretty strong markets. If you are selling in those markets, awesome. Now let's look on the other side of things. So if you're selling in these markets, you have a higher level of inventory that's really pulling the numbers up. So that means these markets, you have to be specifically, you have to be a little bit more competitive on price. So let's chat more about these semi detached. If you are a semi detached in the city center, so you, and you'll see in the maps, that's that purple area that goes downtown, of course, but it also comes down to Glenmore and up north of 16th up to McKnight and it goes out to Sarcy. So there, it is a pretty big area. If you're within that zone, you, and you have a semi detached property, so you have an infill, or if you have potentially it doesn't have to be an infill, but just an older property that is semi detached you have over 10 months of inventory, over 10 months of inventory. So that means that if you are selling one of those properties, you need to be extremely competitive on your price. You are very much in buyer's territory. So if you are too high, it's just, it's basically going to be a non-starter. You basically won't have a chance, unfortunately, if you are semi-detached and you're in the city, the city center because of that high level of inventory and that low number of sales. So you just naturally have to be a lot more competitive than even your detached friends up in the Northwest. They still have to be competitive. They don't get me wrong, they still have to be competitive. But if you are a 
semi-detached in the city center, you have to be very competitive. Also semi-detached, or sorry, also row and in the west. So if you have a row property in the west, that means you have a townhouse or something along those lines. A row property in the west, you are creeping up to 10 months of inventory. So if you have a townhouse out west you're trying to sell, get competitive, get very, very competitive because there's just too much inventory out there for buyers to choose from. So what is going to make yours stand out? So let's wrap all of this up. Let's say you're a buyer or let's say you're a seller. How can we best make sense of what's going on here and how can we best set ourselves up for success? If you are a seller and you're in one of these areas, and if you don't know, talk to your realtor, they'll be able to provide you with the statistics specifically for your area of Calgary or your zone or even your community for that matter. You need to look at where you stand. So if you are in the city center and you have a semi-detached property and you have 10 months of inventory and you're testing the market out and you're, you know, you're just trying a little bit higher, it just won't happen. Like you just have way too much competition out there. So you have to get very, very competitive. Same thing with row out west. Now, if you're looking for a home, let's say you're a buyer and you're looking at a detached homes in the northwest or southeast or east, or even the semi-detached in the southeast, well, just because of that, you are somewhat in a balanced territory. So if you're lowballing these sellers, chances are you're not gonna get much that's gonna hit because there are a few buyers out there in that, in that territory and there are a number of sales. So just know that. So if you are a buyer, know the market that you are, that you are dealing in. A lot of times we're gonna hear these statistics that the market has just gone up and we're, everything's coming to an end. And if you're a buyer, you're thinking, okay, so this property's listed at 475, I'm gonna come in at 425 and they're going to accept it. Well, that's not necessarily the case if you're a detached home in the Northwest because your market's still pretty fair and actually somewhat on the stronger side of Calgary for sure. So you can't expect that. And then if you are a buyer into the infill community, it's the same thing. Let's say your property was worth 900,000 in 2014. And as a seller, if you were at 900,000, you probably wouldn't sell. But as a seller, if you came down to say like 825, hypothetically, and then a buyer came in, you as a buyer, you also want to have to understand the price difference between where they're listed now and where they would have been listed in 2014. So as a buyer, you just have to remain conscious and have a full understanding of where the market has been and where it's going, or else you're going to end up buying a place and maybe even go into competitive offers because your semi-detached property was listed at 780 and in 2014 it was worth 900. So you went into competing offers paid 800 for it and then you think you came and you think you made out poorly but that's not the case because your list price is independent from what's happening in the market so that's if you're a buyer know what's going on and know that you are going to make out in a pretty good position if you're in a lot of the areas within calgary but also know if you're looking for some of these detached products that oftentimes you are getting to more of a balanced market if you're a seller and you are in one of the markets that have these high levels of inventory so we're talking six, seven, eight, nine, ten plus months of inventory, you just have to be competitive on price. You do. Of course, your marketing has to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. You have to differentiate your property. That's all extremely important. But if you're not competitive on price, you're going to be in a very, very difficult position because there's too many people out there competing. So just understand that, again, if you're a seller, know exactly what's happening within your community and within your area. Talk to your realtor about your months of inventory and what's happening and how many sales are occurring. But if you are in those areas, and if, again, if you are an apartment side of things, you also do have to be very competitive on price. Please feel free to reach out if you have any questions, and we will talk to you soon. Bye for now.